Hello, Fuke Candy here, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines. And last time out, we created what is quite possibly my favourite industrial area yet. Absolutely love how this turned out with our household waste and recycling centre, the garden centre. Thanks again to Luna for the inspiration for that. The little rail yard and everything else in between as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really pleased with how this one turned out. And of course, we did also have a live stream, which is probably going to go down as the most crazy live stream ever for me because this is all we <laughs> achieved however if you have not caught the vod go and give it a watch because you will see flustered candy <laughs> at her uh, absolute worst i want to say slash best and just again like i can't say enough how many times like thank you all so much for the absolutely insane support that you guys gave on this stream each and every one of you like tuning in for two and a half hours and you all stuck with it as well <laughs> To watch me build absolutely nothing, but to have all of the love pour in was just completely overwhelming, and I love each and every one of you. We will come back to the farm on future live streams, as I know a lot of you were emotionally invested in that, but for today we have got several things to do, actually. So firstly, obviously the Financial Districts DLC has dropped, so let's add in a very small Financial District. Obviously our downtown is relatively complete now and I wasn't convinced that I really wanted to add this DLC into it. However, I think we've got a perfect little spot over here where we can demolish some of these kind of unneeded university buildings. We've got an awful lot of university buildings around the downtown already. So we're going to repurpose this area here into a financial district with a stock market. And then secondly, we will be coming on to three islands that now need an awful lot of decorating thanks to some insanely, insanely generous donators on that stream. So we'll be fixing up Edwards Island, the Isle of Dave, and also the Titan Atlas Nature Reserve as well. So lots and lots to do in this episode. Let's crack on. Hey, so I have just cleared out this area and let's start to put in a road network that can support our stock exchange into here. I'm thinking what I'm going to use is this little one lane cobblestone street that we used in Prepare to Market. We haven't used it for a while, but I think it will make for quite a nice kind of unique one way system to frame our stock market. So let's go ahead and get this in. And I think if we place it in here, what we can do is do a little bit of bobbing to get rid of these trees. Definitely. I don't think they look particularly great. So let's go ahead and remove all of them just like that and then we should be able to get our road in nice and close to the side here but I think actually we will switch that around so we can have an entrance in this way and then they built around one way down to this side I'm not imagining that there's going to be a huge amount of traffic coming through here and I'm hoping people won't use it as a cut through but we will see okay so let's just adjust this over a tiny bit so it sits nice and central in there and we do just need a tiny little bit of surface painter to tidy up these edges Maybe we can see that tiny strip of grass. Yeah, that makes it a little bit neater. And then that gives us some nice opportunities to do some plaza work, etc. out the front here. And then on the sides, we are going to start placing in some of the financial district buildings. Now, in all honesty, I'm not a huge lover of level twos and level threes in this. Some of them are okay for a certain purpose. But I have to say the level one buildings are actually really, really quite stunning. And yeah, very, very happy to have those included in Oridon. I think this is an appropriate place where we've got our old town European district here, merging into the much more modern downtown skyscraper area. So this is really why I've chosen this position for the financial district. So let's go ahead and set up some nice corner pieces in here. We're going to have to use Move It and a bit of merging to get this all to fit in, but it absolutely will fit in the space. So I've taken the corner assets with the columns and the pillars, and then we do also have a non-corner asset that we can use in here as well, which fits the same theme as these. If you haven't seen my top tips video, it will be linked in a little tag in the corner of the screen right now. You can go and check that out. And that is top tips for how to make financial office districts look good. Because it can be challenging. <laughs> so let's just merge this over. And what we can find is we can actually get this blends in super, super well particularly on the roof where we get this door in the middle. It's slightly dodgy on that side, but these windows and everything all fit perfectly together. Really happy with how these buildings merge into one another. And then, of course, this end, let's turn this around and do exactly the same thing. So we'll get this all lined up really nicely, this end too. 
And what I'm actually going to do is essentially repeat almost the same pattern over the other side, but we're going to use a slightly different building actually in the middle of it. So let's go ahead and again get the corner pieces in because I have to say like, when we just go down and look at this, this is why I've chosen these. When we go down to street level, these columns, <laughs> this is just stunning when you have this kind of curvy end to it. And then the big columns on the side. I really, really, really like these assets. Actually, I think this is a super addition to the game. But when they start to get those big glass towers on the top, they do become slightly less desirable in my own personal opinion. So over this side, we're going to do something slightly different and we're going to use these buildings in the middle to create our pattern this side. So let's go ahead and again get in the corner piece and we'll spin this one around because I think these, although it's not exactly the same theme like we've used on the other side, I think they go quite nicely and you know it's not always great to have completely symmetrical designs so I think this adds a bit of differentiation to either side of the stock exchange here and they're a little bit more appropriate I think where they're packed in on the side there. But we want to make sure when we're moving these around that all of the doors are visible and everything is appropriate like that. Uh, but I think that is looking okay. So let's go ahead and get the other side of this in as well. And these buildings you can see as you merge them in like this work really nicely from the top down view. It kind of looks pretty good I think back to back. This asset actually, this one here, is one of the few where it has a reasonably nice back to it. Most of the others just have a flat kind of concrete wall so if you are designing any buildings where you're not covering up the back, you're not doing a complete block, they are definitely the asset to use there. So yeah, there we go. I think that that works quite nicely. Now the monorail line isn't perfectly straight here, which is slightly frustrating, but it, it still works. I think we've got enough room to breathe on this side that we are okay. And the Oregon downtown is pretty well packed in, so this kind of just adds to that same thing that we've got. And let's go ahead and draw in a path underneath the concrete for people to walk from either side of the roads and back down through this financial district there and we will also do the same here so we'll make sure that they can access this and we'll need to cover that up with a bit of surface painter there we've obviously got the road now in place this side so that is all good now we obviously need to do a bit of detailing around this and in particular i want to look at the back of it because i think we can make this quite a lot nicer and actually what I am going to do is go ahead and upgrade this to level two because I think what we do want here is the little bit of extra height that the level two stock exchange gives us which will give a bit more differentiation to the buildings that we have on the sides as well. Yeah there we go I think that looks an awful lot better as a level two building. I think if we go to level three or higher where we start to get the glass roof it doesn't make as much sense for this area so I'm just going to stick to a level two for this. And frankly, the stock exchange is a good way of making money, but we don't have too much of an issue with money in Oridan, so I'm probably not going to invest that heavily in time spent playing the stock market. But at the back here, what I do want to do is give it more of a grand entrance, and I definitely want to get rid of this trash bin that is here. So let's remove that. I don't think there's any, yeah, there's no other props at the back here to give ourselves a nice entrance. So what we can do from this is find our prop doors. And we definitely want quite a large one. So I'm thinking this one. And let's place this in at the back here. And what we'll do is I'm actually going to put in three sets of doors here next to each other. So we get what sort of looks like a bit more of a grand entrance way. And I think what we will do is actually, because we've got these modern glass doors at the bottom here, is actually add in a little bit of a structure that can add a tiny bit more grandeur to this as well. So we'll add in this awning feature here. So we definitely want to move these awnings so they're not in the window. So we have got prop snapping on here and let's just hold alt so we get smaller movements and just drag this down a little bit so it's right over that entrance there. And then of course we can add also glass into this as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So there we go. So we get a slightly more grand entrance I feel for that. And I do think as well if we get the city arch sub building from Find It. I don't know if that's maybe a little bit too much, but I'm quite liking it. So it kind of fits perfectly into this space. So I'm actually going to leave that like that, I think. We can debate that in the comments. <laughs> and then, of course, what we do want to do is detail this up with some nice tiling work, some pathways in so they could access potentially those back doors. And yeah, a lot of communal space, exactly the same without the front here as well. 
But just before we do that, I do also want to add in some more financial district buildings over here. So I'm actually going to delete out all of these blocks of residential, including our little props that we had here. Sorry, people. Yes, I've just made you homeless. I'm so sorry. But there is one financial office building, which I just absolutely, <laughs> I just can't resist in Oridan. So we are going to put this in and we're actually going to make a little bit of a circle out of it, I suppose. So we are just going to orientate these into a set of four in a block fashion, which will have a nice little courtyard in the middle of it as well. And then we just obviously want to make sure that we're moving it in place so that everything is lined up perfectly. Now, one thing as well is I don't like the tiles on this building. So I am actually just going to bob those off because they will hang out over onto the pavement. And there's also a little linden tree on this as well. So let's get rid of that too. So then we're not having any issues with trees on road and the such like and then let's go ahead and grab these four buildings like this and we can just arrange these nicely into this space so i probably want to line them up i think to that road there or actually more so maybe this curvy road i think like that will be okay we have got enough room all the way around it but i just absolutely love the red brick on this and i think it is a nice transition going into the european identity here and also actually some modern city center which we have over that side so then of course we just need to tidy this up with a little bit of surface painter around the edges here and maybe some more street detailing we shall see and then on this side there's a few more buildings to add so let's go ahead and have a little look and i am actually thinking what we will do is use these ones which i'm not overly a massive key lover on they're very very blocky but i think they suit this little area quite well and what we can do with them is quite a lot of building fusing here to get them into the shape that we want. So these ones, although the roof looks a little bit mad, this wool curving around the bend here actually looks really nice. And we will need to use move obviously to get it off the pavement, off the road here. But I quite like how that turns out. So let's put in another corner piece here and we'll just shift that round like that. And then this building as well has a really nice arched arched window on the back but we are going to cover it up with another one of these which we can line up nicely into this space now we obviously want to watch out for these windows here but we want to make sure that that archway entrance is very bit visible because that's obviously the key feature of the building there so i think that that goes in okay like that and then one final one round this side and we are going to angle this in diagonally uh, to fit it into a kind of odd shaped building here so this is going to be very much like the developers knocked down some old housing and built this weird bank looking financial building it's a very odd shape to fit the shape that was available to them i think in general that all kind of works around there so yeah happy with that placement Okay, so before we come onto the islands, let's go ahead and just touch this up with a little bit of detailing. And yes, this is a really small financial district, but Oridan has a lot going on in its downtown. And a lot of it has taken me an awful long time to really detail up. So I'm very reluctant to start ripping things out and creating a bigger one. And also, like I said, I'm not the biggest lover in the world of a lot of these financial district buildings, particularly with the glass roofs on. So I'd rather have some taller skyscrapers and the such like from the skyscrapers pack or from IT cluster. So yeah, we shall leave that like that and focus on our very small little financial stock exchange district.
Okay, so there we go. We have our financial district and I actually am quite pleased with how well it sits into this little area. I think adding a little pop of height as well at this side of the European district works nicely. Again, helping to build up layers as we go into the main downtown there. And it's a nice transition from our orifices office park over this side into that big skyscraper haven that is the central business district downtown there. So yeah, pleased with that pleased with that we definitely don't want to upgrade this any further i think that is plenty for this area so we did just come in with a couple of little seats nice little hedge circles at the back here with the statue a bit more tiling to give this back entrance a bit more importance and then a nice big fountain a couple of extra seats and two of the plazas which come with the dlc as well so the bear and the bull right outside the front of the stock exchange here which i thought was a nice touch but that's pretty much it really so let's move on now to our first island and we're going to head back over here to Edward Bickford's Island. Now Edward has asked if we can put an observatory on this island which do you know what I actually really love the idea of because we have got our university campus right here so I feel like it could be an extension of you know some kind of science department looking out at space and the whatnot on the island. So I think that's a super nice idea. And we're going to keep it very kind of rural. The observatory really is going to be pretty much the only thing here. We will have maybe a couple of small buildings around it and some path structure. But that is it. Now, the biggest challenge here is how we connect this up, because we do have this little peninsula that we could run a path across here, but we have ferries coming across. <laughs> so we're going to have to raise it up quite a lot to get it in. But let's just check out what it's going to look like. And what we're going to do is bring it out of this segment here, which I feel like makes the most sense. So let's go ahead onto freeform paths and we'll bring it out and up this peninsula here. Uh, we do have tree anarchy on, so that may be <laughs> a bit of a problem. Let's turn tree anarchy off and try that again. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we're keeping to the height of the terrain here. And I actually want to turn collision off, which is going to mean we're going to get trees in the road anyway. But let's just bring it out this side for now. And what we'll do is we'll bring it. Oh, let's pause it right there because we've got a very perfect timing coming right across here. So let's just bring it out across to our island for a second. And then what we can do is adjust the height and the shape of this. I actually don't mind the curve too much, so let's leave that. But let's grab these nodes. And we want to make sure that this ferry is not clipping into this. So and there's a guy. There's literally a guy walking <laughs> right across our bridge. Is it Travis? I actually got to just find out. No, it's Earl Walker. I mean, yeah, he is. He's very good at walking. <laughs> he can walk on air. <laughs> so Earl, yes, well done there. So, right, yes, let's raise up these nodes a little bit. And in fact, let's just make sure that these nodes are of equal height as well. So we're getting a nice flat top to our bridge. So we'll grab them again and just raise them up a tiny bit more. I think that just about gives clearance. Let's watch as this ferry goes past. Yes, we're OK. And of course, what I have forgotten here is we actually do need a road. <laughs> so let's change this path up. And we're going to use one of the Park Life paths as roads. Roads. OK, so there we go. We have now sorted that. And this is now an actual road. <laughs> so we can actually put our observatory out here. So I do, I think, want the observatory sat on this top corner here. So I'm just going to draw in a piece of road like this so that we can align it nicely. And let's go ahead and find the observatory. So realistically speaking, I don't know what direction we would necessarily want this pointed in. I feel like it would look nicer if it was pointed out to see. So let's just turn this around. And I will, of course, bob off those car parking spaces and the little trees at the back as well, because we're not keen on the vanilla trees. There we go. We've got a nice, clean space to work with. And the entrance to it is over here. So I think what we will do is actually frame it with a road network here. So let's just adjust these nodes so that they're nice and snug up next to the side of the observatory here. And then we can continue to create a box around it like this and then of course let's make sure that all of this is snapping to the same height as the observatory and then i think what we will do is just bring this really far forward so it's right on the edge of the water here pointing out into the sea which i think is yeah quite nice quite nice happy with that 
And then what we'll do is we'll bring in, I think, right directly to the back of the observatory, we'll bring in the road access here. So let's just connect this up to our bridge this side. So I think we want to keep the number of buildings here to an absolute minimum. And we have got another Sim just aimlessly walking everywhere. Ashlyn Murray, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know why this happens. I don't know why. But I think we want to keep this nice and simple and clear of buildings, really. So what I'm actually thinking of doing is just adding in two of these very small offices and we'll just merge them in together just a little bit to make it feel like sort of one building there. I think we just have two of these as if it's sort of an administration building for the observatory. Move it up nice and close and that will do nicely. We may add a little kind of communal sitting area in here. But then the rest of the island, what we do want is really quite dense forest. Let's go ahead and grab a forest brush. Let's turn up the density. We don't want the size to be too big because we want to get these nicely spaced in here. And then we'll go ahead and fill in a lot of this area. And so it really will be quite a natural looking landscape and almost with the observatory hidden from the mainland. That's the kind of vibe that I was thinking of going for here. So something like that, I think, works quite nicely. And then the final finishing touch is just to give it that nice rocky shore like we have around the university here, like around the sailing club and that sort of thing. And I think, honestly, that will probably do for this island. And yeah, I think it looks quite nice sort of peeking out of this forest. If we go back to the mainland, you can see it from the shore here. You see the back of it, but you might not necessarily know what it is. So it's sort of quite exciting to walk down this path and get up towards the observatory this way. Yeah, quite liking how this is turning out. And that's a nice little unique to put on this island, which complements the university super nicely. So I just want to say again, a massive, massive thank you to you, Edward Bickwood, for your incredible, insane generosity. It is so, so, so appreciated. And as you have requested, we are going to call this Edward's Island and we will name this the Bickwood Planetarium. And there we go. So we've just got a little bit of rock detailing to add in, which we will go ahead and do now. There we go we have got this really heavily dense undergrowth in this forest as we run up and in towards the observatory a few little picnic benches here and there a couple of offices again i've added in this little picnic bench park so that people can actually use these tables or we'll see if anyone actually does come to this park there and then as we come out again it's just more thick undergrowth underneath the trees either side and come out onto a lovely view onto Exe's Castle and all the way across to Solitude Port and the downtown actually. So this is quite a nice little viewpoint island, I must say. But there we have it, rocks all the way around and a very natural feel. So yeah, I really like how that has turned out. Thank you so much for the idea. And again, thank you so much for your support, Edward. Okay, so coming on to the Isle of Dave, and thank you, Dave Ullman, for your exceptionally, exceptionally generous donation on Sunday's stream as well. And we are going to do something uh, a little bit insane <laughs> with this island. I'm going to use a unique building that I have never, ever placed into a single city ever before, because frankly, it doesn't fit. It's the weirdest thing ever, and it's just unusable. <laughs> However, we are going to make it usable, I think. I'm, th that's the aim anyway with this. So what we are going to do, I'm going to start off with by creating a path 
or a road over to this island. So yet again, I am going to use the Park Life Paths as road option, and we're actually going to use a nature park road for this. I am going to have to force it to the ground because we cannot connect a raised segment of road onto these pedestrian paths, which is uh, quite annoying indeed. So what I am going to do is I'm going to turn off snapping to nodes here. We're going to bring out a tiny, tiny little bit like this, and we will have to obviously get rid of some of this IMT that is in here. Now let's go back to snapping to nodes. We'll snap to this node now that we can, and we'll bring this across this riverway like so. Now, <laughs> obviously we need to pick up this node and sort this out. And we will just have to move over some of our rocks ever so slightly there, which is not too much of a problem. Now let's go to IMT and just make sure we've cleared out this little section. So we'll just remove that little bit of fence from here so that we've got this road coming out nicely. Now that is slightly not straight, so let's just make that straight as we get across to here. Um, and then what we will do is continue up a path along this side of the island. Now we're actually going to essentially turn this into a rock island. <laughs> it's literally going to be completely covered in rocks from head to foot, and you will see why in a second. So I'm just going to grab these nodes firstly and make sure that they are aligned to terrain height there, which they are. We've got slight undulations in the terrain. But for starters, let's just have a little look at our rocks, because there is one that we have got off the workshop, which we've used actually in the Rocky Horror Nature Park much earlier on in Oridon, which we're going to put in here because I'd love for the Sims to be able to walk down through this archway to come into this uh, slightly odd, unique building. <laughs> but yeah, what we will do is continue on this path all the way down this side of the island. So let's just turn Snappy on so we get a nice angle there. And then we'll continue it on this way. So we'll turn snapping back off again and go back to free form so that we can follow the coastline round nicely. And that will become apparent in a second why. Let's just bring it in this way and then we're going to drive it straight across like so, so that we can place our unique building right here on the end. So <laughs> now we go on to it. This is the big reveal. The one that we are going to use is in fact the Sphinx. <laughs> and yeah, like I said, I have never used this in a single city. I mean, it's truly awful. <laughs> It's truly awful. I don't even know what these deck chairs are on the back. It's like it's turned into some kind of Vegas hotel. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm just not a fan, but I think we can do something funny with it. And also, what's with the mouse? It's just so cheesy. It's so cheesy. Let's use a little bit of bow on it, and we're going to remove absolutely all of the props and trees from this building. So just like that, the horrendous deck chairs are gone, and the conifers, and all the rest of it. Okay, so the plan is we are going to use our sinking rocks, which we have not used for actually a really long time in Oridon. And what we're going to do is essentially like <laughs> attempt to completely submerge this into the rock as if it was built out of the rocks. And like, yeah, it's, it's something like that. That's the effect that we're going to attempt to go for, at least anyway. So there's some pretty good rocks that we can use for this if we're looking for nice sharp edges and that the such like. So. Of course, what we want to do is use move it and drag these all the way down to the ground and position them. This is going to be an awful lot of finagling, as it were, to get this in place. And we want to try and cover up some of this random green, almost astroturf that's on the front of it, which is super, super random. And have it so that the front of it and the arms with the horrendous mouse <laughs> are sticking out of the rocks. And we're basically going to put rocks over this whole island. So it's like one massive rocky landmass. Now I think out the front of it as well, we do want a bit of a visitor's centre. So I am actually going to, and I think probably the most appropriate for this is actually zoo assets with the brown roofs. So I think we will add in just a little toilet block and a little cafe just out the front here. So it gives people some facilities for food and toileting while they are out here on this fairly isolated island. So now because this is an awful lot of rock sinking and an awful lot of just rocks in general around this island, maybe a few trees dotted here and there and a bit of undergrowth and the such like. I will do this all in a time lapse and I'll be right back.
Okay, so there we have Isle of Dave. I really never thought I'd use this asset. I'm still not 100% convinced about it, but I think it works a little bit better than what it looks like in its just standard format. So we have come in and obviously, like I said, placed rocks around everywhere. And I have to say, this little bay, I'd totally go scuba diving here in all of the polluted water from the port. But yeah, it looks nice and crystal clear. <laughs> We've made it all sand texture and added in actually a lot of cliff texture decals, uh, which matches the cliff texture of my theme along here to give this a kind of rocky path look to it as we go down. But it's very heavily rocked in. So you've kind of got cliffs, cliffs on each edge. And this is my absolute favourite view as you come around here and you see the downtown in amongst all of these natural rocks and overgrowth and trees. You've got this big city looming out of absolutely nowhere. And I hope you enjoyed the little first person walk down through the cliff tunnel there. I thought, I thought that was a nice little fun thing to show you. It's all very natural. I've mixed in some different coloured rocks, some of the vanilla rocks with some of the workshop rocks that we typically use in Oradon. I did also add in this little viewing platform here, this kind of secret little path that goes in through the rocks off to the side, which I thought was a nice touch as well. But it is all very well compacted in. And yeah, <laughs> that's it really. That is it. So I hope you like your island day when you approve of my use of this crazy, horrendous, unique asset. <laughs> and thank you again so much for your very, very kind generosity. So let's move on to our final island, which is the Atlas Paradise Nature Reserve. So to start off with, I am going to clear out all of the trees like that. And then what we need to think about first is transport connections. So clearly this island is too far away from the mainland to add a road bridge or a pedestrian bridge because that would just look awful going over this main shipping line that comes through here. But we can absolutely add ferries to this island and all we'd need in order to do that is a garbage collection point and a crematorium. Otherwise we're all sorted from helicopters for medical police and fire usage so we should be absolutely fine to just create a ferry here. Obviously we could turn it into a pedestrian area however I definitely want this to be a nature reserve and not using concrete paths and the such like so we're not going to do that 
And I'm also reluctant to add any more service points into the city, so I think that that would be unnecessary. So we'll just keep this as a regular ferry access with a couple of the little services that we need. So in terms of our ferry network, we have this line that comes all the way out to the OAP Plaza and the stadium district out here, including Domino 412's stadium, the football stadium on the end. Thank you for your very kind generosity as well on Sunday stream. That really was insane. So what we're going to do is extend this out onto our nature reserve island. And actually, this will be quite a nice little ferry ride as you'll get to go past the Sphinx itself. <laughs> And on around. So it's almost like a little tourist tourist ferry line. So let's just stop it there. The one issue is it is going to cross our shipping path here, which is a very busy shipping path, as we know, going into the port. So that potentially could be a little bit of an issue. But for now, I think I am not going to worry about it. I think actually what we will do is go for a, just a regular vanilla ferry stop here. And I'm wondering if actually maybe we do bring it into this side. I think this would be a nice spot for it out here. Uh, so that the ferries can kind of pass some of the nature reserve and it brings it into a little bit more of a central position within it as well. So I think that makes a bit more sense. So let's continue connecting this on up. And of course, let's extend our ferry line over to it. So we'll drag this stop out to here and then we just need to remember to add in stops for either direction back into the OAP plaza there. So we're still connected and servicing citizens for that area. So yeah, that will bring them in nicely here. Now, unfortunately, we do have this piece of road. However, we will use multi-network tool. Let's unlock that. And we are going to use a rural road for this. Now, this is going to be very heavily nature reserve type area. So I think we absolutely want to be using these rural mud roads to connect things around this area. Now, like the other islands, there are a few unique buildings I would like to add to this. So let's bring a little road out and see where we can position them. What I'm thinking is I'm actually going to put them right in the middle of the nature reserve around about here. So I'm just going to bring the road out straight for now. We can place the uniques and then we'll get them all organised and looking fab together. So the first one is the climate research station, which I think will go quite nicely into a nature reserve style area. We also have the bird and bee haven, again, quite nature like. And then finally, what another unique which I literally never use because I absolutely hate the trees. However, we've got the luxury of Bob in this city, so we can banish these horrendous redwoods and change them out for a lovely Douglas fir tree. I do like that. So we've got a couple of different heights in here. But what this does do is give us actually essentially a camp for what I'm going to say is the climate workers and the bird bee workers that are working within this nature reserve area. So I think it works pretty nicely from that respect. So I'm actually going to offset all of these and a lot of this island is going to be filled, I would add, with trees and dense woodland and rocks and all of our typical nature reserve props. So we will have a campsite out here and the such like that, that little log cabins for people to stay in and to camp out on the island so they can stay here. But this is broadly speaking how we are going to do it. So let's get in some connections up to here. So we'll just shift that over slightly. I think we just want to go straight in, realistically, right into the end there. And what we can use, we've obviously got this strip of gravel out the front, which is a little bit weird. So I'm going to use Surface Painter on the Remove Texture Tool and just remove all of this from either side because, yeah, not too sure about that, particularly where we're not having the road lining the front of it. So I think that looks quite nice going into the cabin area there. And then I think what I'd like to do is kind of combine these two into one sort of area. Let's make sure that they are the same height for starters. And we'll have to do a little bit of smoothing out of landscapes and the such like here. But that's absolutely fine. So, yeah, let's position them like that. Now, obviously, on this one, we do not want the car parking spaces. This is not going to be a kind of an island that you'd really want to drive around necessarily. So let's go ahead and get rid of those. And similarly as well, I think with the surface, we will banish all of that concrete from that. And similarly, we'll get rid of the gravel that's in the front of this too. So we'll just get rid of all of that. And then let's grab our road again and draw in some connections. And I think what we do need here is a little bit of gravel actually. So let's just go to our brush tool for this and we can kind of create a little gravel area. We'll need to get rid of the surface painter that we have undone for this, which is okay. 
So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And I think we'll just have it up to there. Potentially what we could do actually is a tiny amount of gravel to indicate paths to and from these different areas here. Something like that. Now let's just trim this back ever so slightly. We've got a nice edge with our road and we'll need to do a bit of detailing around that to help it blend in. But all of these, they're not going to be fenced in. This is quite a rural area here, but I think they make a nice starter for our nature reserve community. And now in addition to this as well, I did mention we are going to need some services here. So we do thankfully have our tiny little recycling centre. So let's add in that. And then in terms of death care, we also have this very, very small, tiny crematorium, which from the workshop, which I am going to add in here as well, which essentially just looks like a storage hut. So let's move this and we'll put this up next to these crates, which I think is a suitable place here. And then similarly, I think we will add to this just as you come into it here. And again, we do want a little bit of surface painter around this just to help it blend in a bit better. And we'll come in with some decals as well afterwards to make this look a little bit better too. Some of our dirt decals make it feel a little bit more natural and the such like. But that gives us everything we need to have this island be functional. We've already got a visitor here. Hello, welcome. What is your name? Max Parker, there we go. <laughs> He's sitting at the climate research station there. So what we do want to do now, of course, is add in our nature reserve. But I am just thinking before that, potentially adding some little facilities down here for visitors might be quite nice. So I'm going to use Zoo as always for these, pretty similar to what we did on the Sphinx Island. And we'll just have a toilet and a very small cafe out the front here. And I'm actually not going to extend this. I'm going to keep this super, super small because I want this to be a very, very kind of rural island community if it is even a community at all if you can call it that nature reserve that's really what it is so just when they come in now they are greeted with some facilities which i think is a nice thing to have in fact let's just shift these over slightly so they line up very stuck really nicely there and with each other of course <laughs> and we have got some tourists who have just got off the ferry that's sailing right through <laughs> the pier there and here they come here they come welcome to the titan atlas paradise nature reserve everybody Welcome in, welcome in. As we can see, they're walking up to the end of the road and walking round. So let's actually just use a little bit of node controller for this. So we're going to go here and we're going to say that this is a crossing. And thankfully on these rural roads, you can't see it. So at least then hopefully they can just cross the road that side if they need to. I don't know why they're walking all the way around there. Slightly weird. But just off camera, I did have a thought. And actually I have just copied our university sailing club from the university over to here because I thought this looked quite nice here with the key. Just added in an information booth and then gravel surface painted all of this because I think that adds quite a nice a little effect there. We've got loads of people coming in now. I think it makes it feel like, you know, you can sail your personal sailing boat over to this island. In the detailing time, I might mix up some of the boat types so it looks less like a sailing club. So let's now importantly get in our nature reserve. So I think what I'm going to do here is actually draw in a separate road, which is going to lead up to the main entrance, which will sit round about here. Let's just put in a little bit of road there. So let's go to nature reserve and I am actually going to use the main grand entrance here. Now the car parking spaces are gone from it, but I do think it just adds a little bit of stature, especially because it's slightly up the hill from where people will be coming in on the ferry. I think that adds a nice touch to it. And then from here, we're going to build out a massive path network all the way around the island that we can then place the likes of fishing huts, campsites, cabins, hunting lodges, whatever they're called, boulder sites, gazebos, watchtowers, viewing platforms, all kinds of fun things to make our nature reserve really, really pop with a bang. Now we have done one other nature reserve, but it was very, very tiny. And it's the Rocky Horror Park, as you may remember, next to Dodgy Rocks, but it's very, very small. So this is going to hopefully be a completely different vibe, particularly with these unique buildings sat in the middle of it as well. So let's start by laying out the path network and then we can figure out where the campsites, etc., are going to go.
Okay, so there we have our path network and let's go ahead and start placing in some assets. So I'm going to start over here and I think this would be quite a nice spot for some cabins. So I'm actually going to go for the log cabin campsite, which we've already bobbed off all the trees from, <laughs> which I think actually is a really cute little area. Obviously it needs trees around it, it needs detailing and the such like. But then what we can do around it is also add in some of the individual hunting cabins which I think will be a nice little touch. Now we do need to be careful because we need paths for these. So I might bring some paths in and around it. But let's go ahead and add a few on the outskirts as well, just to kind of really flesh out this little campsite here. So I think, I think we'll stick to the little ones. We'll just have them flowing around the back here. And then, yeah, let's bring in a path around it so that they are all connected. And I'm actually, instead of using the nature reserve, I'm actually going to go ahead and use the visible paths for this just so that we don't see it because they're kind of you know they'd walk in and out of everywhere within this complex anyway so yeah i don't think it matters so let's just get them all connected up with our nice invisible path and then the sims will all be able to walk around to it without us having to put in a massive quite ugly looking path so there we go and i think as well because we've got a lot of this ruined texture in here let's continue out with this surface painter out to some of these huts a little bit like this so we've got kind of odd trails where people have been walking in and amongst all of the huts like this break away some of it so it's relatively patchy little bits around the benches and stuff on the sides of the huts as well yeah i think that adds quite a nice little touch to the area just extends out those cabins they're not exactly the same but I think it works. I think it works. And then with a few trees and the such like around it, let's just have a little look at what it will look like. It will really help to blend it in. I think we want some rocks around the coast and the such like too. Potentially you could do a little viewing platform actually out the back. That would be a nice touch because we've got quite a nice view of the downtown over there. In fact, you can actually see the Sphinx from here too. <laughs> So let's go ahead and do that and we'll add in a large one here and this can be like a little sort of group meeting place and it connects quite nicely to our invisible path already and um, we've got some trees in the building so we want to watch out for that and we also need to remember as well that we have got these invisible paths here so we don't want to put trees on top of them because we will just have sims walking through them which will look a little bit odd so something like that i think will be nice we'll obviously make sure this is properly detailed when we come to it and we have got the lighthouse on here on the end, which needs some rocks around it again, which we will do in the detail in time lapse in just a second. But just to make sure that Sims walk down here and the such like, let's just put a little lean to shelter here at the end, which I think will be a nice thing to have there. And I really don't like that vanilla bush. So let's get Bob out again. We've used Bob a lot today. Got good usage out of Bob, <laughs> that's for sure. We'll get rid of that little vanilla bush there. And let's actually just drag this slightly further back from the path. Ooh. So that path is doing interesting things. <laughs> Let's just fix that up so we don't have any issues there. And there we go. So that's kind of this campsite down this end sorted. Down here, what I'd like to do is add in some tinted campsites. So let's have a little look at what the plot ones look like. Now, they've obviously got the vanilla conifer trees in, which I don't mind too much. The vanilla bushes are maybe a little bit too much. I think if we add in several of these here, we'll get the kind of look that we want. And of course we will place individual tents around various different places of people just kind of wild camping if you like in their own locations but we'll create these little set campsites in various places as well so like that i think night looks nice and of course we've got loads of props in the nature reserve like firewood chairs a well little toilet blocks and we will go ahead and add those in of course as well Okay, so in this little bit here, we are going to add in a bouldering site because I feel like this is quite a good location for it where we've got the curve in the road. In fact, I think we'll actually add a couple of these in. What we will do is definitely add rocks around these to help it blend in a little bit better so we haven't just suddenly got rocks as this guy's lady is literally sitting on the rock really high up. What the hell's that? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Is it on all of them? how random <laughs> i've never noticed that before i knew that people climbed up that's pretty cool so yeah, we'll have a few of these around but i think that's a great location for those central ones and of course we do want to add in some fishing huts as well and i'm thinking this sort of cliff edge here might be quite a good location for that so let's get a few of these 
and we'll space them out. I think they need their own space, certainly, so that you kind of feel a little bit private when you're out on your fishing holiday and not too like packed in with everyone else. So I think we'll go like that. And none of them are too high off the ground, actually, when we see it like that. So what I will do is then grab our nature reserve path and we'll bring down a connection for all of these. And of course, it's going to square out the landscape. So we do need a lot of detailing around here to make that not happen. We could, in fact, upgrade this to just a gravel path, which conforms to the terrain. It will be a little bit diagonal and slopey, <laughs> but potentially we can get over that. Potentially. We definitely want to make sure that they are connecting up to the huts, though. So like here, where this one's riding off the ground, let's just use a bit of move it to adjust it and move it down to a nice, suitable level here. And again, you can see that's kind of pushed the ground down a little bit, but with a bit of detailing, we can cover that up. We want to make sure that's the same case for all of these. Well, I think that will do nicely in terms of a few fishing huts. We may add a few additional ones in over here. I want to keep this free as beach because we will come in and add in a lot of the canoe props around here. So these canoes that come with the nature reserve. I think this one is the one that's, yeah, the floating one. So we'll definitely have a few of these out on the water floating around this bay. We'll add in more and we'll have a load on the side here as if people can hire them. So we'll come to that in the detail and review as well. So really it is just doing much more of the same of this around here and a lot of this will just be forest. We'll put in some mud decals and have some muddy areas, lots of rocks and things like that in it as well. Lots of tents dotted around in odd places. We will also use these lookout tower viewing platforms and have the odd cabin dotted around in various different places as well. There's tons of props for us to use. But let's go ahead and dive into that detail and time lapse now.
So there we have it. That was an awful lot of trees and an awful lot of plopping undergrowth. <laughs> but I think the effects are quite nice. And we have got so many people coming and going from here. This ferry is insanely, insanely busy. We might have to up the ferries on that actual route. Um, and also just to show you as well that the park is making pretty decent it was making pretty decent money. <laughs> Last time I looked at this, it was well over three grand. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. So yeah, what have we done? I did actually decide to add in a little rural police and fire station because I thought that was just a quite a nice touch. So the ones from the Seaside Resorts content creator pack. We've gotten various signs all over the place, like nature reserve signs, especially when you go into the entrances so you can see where you're going. And as you come down the path, you'll see I've, I mean, I've spammed undergrowth, tried to keep some nice open clearings within the trees as well. So it's not super dense forest all the way around. Plus you've got these cabins out on the front over here. All around the island, there are various little camping spots like this one hidden sort of within the undergrowth, just off the paths where people have kind of decided that they're just going to take that spot and camp. So you'll see there's lots of them all over. About this tree. <laughs> Let's just move this tree. That's a little bit close for comfort, isn't it? Massive, massive fir tree there. Yeah, it's very much the same. So when we come into this campsite down here, we've done lots of little campsite areas and there is an invisible path that runs all the way throughout this. So you'll see Sims potentially walking down it like there, but I quite like this because then they can just sort of walk freely through the woods is sort of how it looks. Then you come to these different areas where they've decided to camp. Um, so I quite like the effect that this has got. I've just got a single tent there. Come through here as a bigger clearing. These guys just on the end with the lovely views out onto the other island over there. So yeah, I think it's all come together quite nicely. We've also got the cabins centrally in the middle there. I've given them some extra toilets, toilet block, little firewood station as well in amongst the signs, just some extra touches of detailing and a builder site there as well. That's very much the theme throughout the island. We've got campsites dotted all over, little cabins, viewing platforms, there's some more campsites in here. I have actually plopped in a couple of the zoo things. So we have got the bison, I think it is. Or is oh, no, that's the moose and reindeer one. And then we've got the bison over there somewhere. I've just used Network Multi-Tool to unlock the paths around so that we can use our nature reserve path rather than the zoo path. But I think that works quite nicely. Um, and then I have actually, there was an abandoned house which I'd moved onto this island from the Sphinx Island, from the Isle of Dave. Um, and I actually decided to copy it and create this little abandoned village. Tons and tons of overgrowth. And actually bringing in the nature reserve path grass into a lot of this, I think helps. Because then you kind of can't really obviously see where the path is anymore. It sort of blends into the village as if you could kind of, kind of walk around it. And there's such like a few little rocks, dead cars and things like that around. But really quite like how that's turned out, particularly with the mud decals here. It looks looks super nice. I added in actually a little bit of terraforming in this little kind of, I wouldn't say mountain, but hill over here with this viewing platform, which is probably the best view in the whole city. You can look down over pretty much everything, but particularly that view of the downtown I think is quite nice. You've got a prime view of the two towers and the biggest skyscraper there. You can actually even see the arch in the distance, the Titan Atlas wheel. Yeah, I quite like how that's turned out. We've obviously got this windy path going up to it. A couple of bouldering sites here merged into the back of the rocks. Extra campsites. Uh, yeah, the bison enclosure here. It's very much yeah more of the same all the way as you go around. Lots and lots of undergrowth. So when you come down to street level, you'll see we've got a couple of tents completely sunk to the ground there, are they? They look like they are. Was that how? They, oh, there we go. They fall back up. I was going to say that definitely looks strange to me then. But yeah, lots of little campsites kind of hidden into the woods as we go round. Lots of thick, thick undergrowth going out onto viewing platforms out there. And then actually, I think on the beach, I've just done one little bit of beach decoration, which is over here. We've got lots of deck chairs and some of the canoes. We've also got a few canoes out on the water as well. I think that turned out quite nicely. And there's an invisible path running all the way along here. So hopefully. Maybe one day some Sims will take that. But there we go. We have it. The Titan Paradise Nature Reserve. <laughs> and thank you so much, Rich, for your insane generosity on Sunday stream. It's so appreciated. And I really hope you like your nature reserve island here. I think it's a nice touch. And I think these three unique buildings have actually blended in quite nicely here. Just touch them up with a couple of decals. 
and there's not really any fencing at all around the whole island because ultimately the entire island is the nature reserve so i didn't really feel that we needed to fence people in or out of anywhere including even the unique buildings here so yeah i think it's i think it's worked out all right i think it's worked out all right so for today that is going to be it and don't forget if you do want to pick up the financial districts dlc or any other cities dlc for that matter and a whole host of other games at really really great pricing please do consider using my instant gaming link linked below. Your purchase there will also help to support this channel as well. If you have enjoyed the video, likes, comments and shares are really, really, really appreciated. We've had almost a year on YouTube and it's been one heck of a year and I just so thank you all for your crazy support. Last Sunday's stream was mind-blowing. Again, do go and check it out. It will be linked in the description if you want to see me completely flustered at my absolute worst slash best. <laughs> then go ahead and give that a watch. But that is all for me for now, so stay tuned for the cinematics and I'll catch you again next time. Bye-bye.